Cozy TV presents 10 Secret Stories. Our TV heroes, our TV icons, our top stars in shows, and what you might not know about them. This is Murder, She Wrote, Behind the Camera. I worked with an actor who's in his 20s who's obsessed with Jessica Fletcher. Jessica Fletcher is a serial killer because clearly everyone is always being murdered around her. Like, if she ever showed up in my town, I'm going on vacation. Angela Lansbury always had to fight to get the roles that were age appropriate for her. However, when she turned 59, it all came together. What Murder, She Wrote was perfect for her. Join TV writers, actors, hosts, reporters, and comics as we count down to our number one secret story. Our countdown starts now. Number 10, Cabot Cove, Maine, was the murder capital of the world? Hello, welcome again to Cabot Cove. Oh my goodness, in the back. Call an ambulance. So someone from the BBC actually looked into this and they came up with an amazing statistic. The murder rate there is 60% higher than the murder rate in Honduras. Cabot Cove should not be a vacation destination unless you plan on dying. There is a sign that shows up in Murder, She Wrote a couple times in season one. Welcome to Cabot Cove, population 3,560 until someone gets whacked. So Jessica Fletcher lives in this small town called Cabot Cove. And it wasn't New York, okay? It was some small little town somewhere. And she wakes up and there's another murder. Listen, I just heard about Mr. Merrill's accident. What a terrible thing. Where can we go this year to die, honey? I hear Cabot Cove in the spring is a lovely place to die. He's dead. How is it that everywhere this woman went, a murder happened? Maybe she should have been the number one suspect. No, no, but it does explain some things that were worrying me. In any kind of series of crimes, usually the police and investigators try and find one common denominator. And the one common denominator is Jessica Fletcher. Like, how come she's never been accused of being the killer? Everywhere she goes, someone dies. You know, like the fireman that starts the fires so he can put them out? Like, if she ever showed up in my town, I'm going on vacation. So Jessica gives up teaching to write murder mysteries. It's open, Ethan. And suddenly, this sleepy little New England town has more murders than the entire Philippines. That fellow from Boston, he's dead. And the Philippines, they have death squads, professionals that are paid to kill people. So at least in the Philippines, all the murders make sense. But uh, Cabot Cove, Maine? What if instead of murder mysteries, Jessica wanted to write more like Stephen King? So instead of all the murders, it would be demonic pickup trucks. Dogs and cats spontaneously combusting. So in a way, Cabot Cove gets off easier with just a whole lot of people getting murdered. They should have a sequel for Murder, She Wrote, and it would be the real estate agent in Cabot Cove selling all the homes where the murders occurred. Who the hell would live in Cabot Cove? You're looking for a house. It's bucolic. It's perfect. And then you find out there's like six murders a month here. Is it always this quiet? On a good day, you can hear the wind, the ocean, and the seagulls. Miss Fletcher! Here's what I don't get. How do they even find the bodies? Like, it's Maine, okay? There are a lot of places to hide a body. If you're gonna have to hide a dead body, you wanna have a lot of land, a lot of area. You wanna have wild animals roaming around free. So Maine, there were things they could have done to get rid of the body, but they always found the body. How do they find these bodies? Or are these the dumbest murderers ever? Let's see, I could go 30 miles into the forest and dump this body where nobody would ever find it, or I could just leave it here. You know what, I'm lazy. You know, I, I often wonder who's solving the murders in Cabot Cove now that, you know, Jessica moved to New York. You know, what's going on? Are people just getting away with murder? Jessica, come back, please. Come on, Mrs. Fletcher. I think you've done more than enough for one day. Number nine, Jessica Fletcher was such a style icon, her fashions are still an inspiration today. I know what I want, Mr. Haggerty, and I get it. If you go online and go to Murder, She Look, there's a blog of all of Jessica Fletcher's great outfits. 
my hand to God, someone has actually gone to the trouble of combing through all the episodes, cataloging everything she wore, documenting it all in screen grabs, and then putting it online. Because, well, A, they need a job, and B, a lot of these things would be closet treasures today. And then there were all those episodes where she put on costumes and disguises. You know she loved that. Mrs. Marguerite Canfield, Lincoln, Nebraska. Oh, yes, Mrs. Canfield. Angela Lansbury, period, was fashionable. Not just in Murder, She Wrote, but throughout her career. Look her up on the internet, and everything that you see her in is, you know, she's a fashionable woman, and a very attractive woman. And she was involved. Each week, she had extensive wardrobe meetings and had approval over everything. Even as the murder mystery writer in Murder, She Wrote, gotta say, I still I found her attractive. Somebody who has a lot of time on their hands went to the trouble of tallying it all up and found that 76% of the time Jessica arrives at the murder scene wearing a patterned blouse. Who knows why? They could launch the Murder, She Wrote fashion line today. Fashions for the woman who wouldn't be caught dead in anything else. Oh my God, would that even sell? Probably. And quite frankly, I have several of those costumes at home and I routinely put them on to do things around the house. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> Coming up, she remained forever faithful to the man she loved and why you never saw Jessica behind the wheel. And you wonder why I don't drive a car. When Murder, She Wrote Behind the Camera continues, you're watching Cozy TV's 10 Secret Stories. Welcome back to Cozy TV's 10 Secret Stories, Murder, She Wrote Behind the Camera. Number eight, Jessica Fletcher is unattached throughout the entire series and loyal to her late husband. Well, you, <laughs> Jessica, carved out quite a life for yourself. Uh, my goodness, Frank was proud of you then. If he was here now, I think how proud he'd be. <laughs> you, uh, you got anybody? Anybody? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you never saw Jessica Fletcher flirting or batting her eyelashes at a man on the show. And there's a reason for that, actually. Her character had lost her husband, and in fact, she's very devoted to her husband, kept him close to her heart at all times in the form of a necklace that she wore around her neck all the time with his name on it. And is the locket that you wear next to your heart with the picture of Frank in it, is that a secret? Not anymore. <laughs> in the show's backstory, before we meet anyone, Jessica was interning at a local theater group. Oh, what? Uh, where's that sweet boy you married? Uh, Fred? Uh, Frank. Oh, he died a few years ago. So even though there are men who are constantly throwing themselves at her in the show, dashing, successful, handsome, wealthy men, she stays true to Frank the entire time. I don't know why I'm pussyfooting around, Jess. You're alone, so am I. I can only speak for myself, but I don't like going to restaurants alone. And I sure don't like waking up in an empty bed. She never dates, she never steps out on him, even though he's dead. And many men find her irresistible, but still, she was true. I presume too much. No, 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 really, no. It, it, it's just that, well, after Frank died, uh, I never considered a change in my life, uh, not changing it in that way. Uh, it's just something I, I never thought about. Only be one Frank for her. Number seven, Jessica Fletcher never owns a car and never learns to drive. All right, so this is how it goes. It's Hollywood Production 101. I I think it's in the production Bible. You have a detective. The detective has a hot car. The detective gets into said hot car and chases. That is the formula. Angela Lansbury is very clever. She insisted that her character not drive a car or own a car. That's why you always saw her on a bicycle. She didn't want the character to ever be involved in a high-speed chase. That would have been a totally different show that I might have liked. Can you picture it? Angela speeding down the highway, firing her revolver out the window, driving up onto the sidewalk, crashing into fruit stands, because like there's always a fruit stand. There's romaine, lettuce, and plums flying out of baskets everywhere. Oh my God, sign me up. Good show. Oh, Jesse, are you all right? And you wonder why I don't drive a car. Even when she moved to New York, then she got in cabs. Mrs. Fletcher, good morning. <laughs> oh, nice to see you. Good morning. You're on it. Correct, madam. Again, no car chases. Loved it. Very smart. Taxi. 
Jessica Fletcher was very cerebral. I mean, where else can you get your best thinking done? In the back of a cab, riding a bicycle, you know, nothing to think about. When you drive, you gotta pay attention. Well, unless you live in Los Angeles, then you really don't have to pay attention. Number six, when Jessica moves to New York, she takes an apartment almost certain to have leaks. Oh, hello, Lieutenant uh, Sergeant. Well, I'm the new tenant here. I'm Jessica Fletcher. Yes, that's who you are. I knew you looked familiar. Now, I live in New York, so I know, like on Law and & Order and these other shows, the addresses are often not real. Now, I remember that Jessica Fletcher moved to New York and lived at, like, 900-something West 61st Street. Now, for those of you who don't know, Fifth Avenue separates West and East. So you get to 500-something, and then you're in the Hudson River. So I'm going to say Jessica was probably about three quarters of a mile into the Hudson River towards New Jersey. Right, they don't have a fancy acronym for it yet, like SOHO for south of Houston or DUMBO for down under the Manhattan Bridge overpass, sort of Union City. Now that would be sunk, which is sort of appropriate, don't you think? And she would be first in line for a new taxi service. Pronounce it, you know, like the way New Yorkers would. And you got Uba Scuba. I think Jessica Fletcher lived at the Statue of Liberty. Coming up, the amazing story of a Murder, She Wrote episode that brought back characters 40 years old. I want you to make my suicide look like murder. Murder? Well, I've made all my plans. I've got good 38. Nobody knows about them. When Murder, She Wrote Behind the Camera continues, you're watching Cozy TV's 10 Secret Stories. Welcome back to Cozy TV's 10 Secret Stories, Murder, She Wrote, Behind the Camera. Number five, the Cabot Cove Lake is where the Jaws attraction took place at Universal Studios Hollywood. You know, it must be frightening to have a father appear out of the blue after 20 years. So if you went to Universal and you were to take the ride and see the Jaws attraction, you're not actually seeing where Jaws was filmed. That movie was filmed on location in Martha's Vineyard. You're seeing where Murder, She Wrote was filmed. Stop that. But here's the deal. Nobody thought that that movie would be a hit, so they sold the boat, they sold everything. And then when Jaws became a smash hit, they refashioned a lake which was already part of the tour as the Jaws Lake. Other movies and TV shows were shot there, including Murder, She Wrote, but what was not shot there was Jaws. Never, ever Jaws. <laughs> Now that is a crossover I'd like to have seen. Bodies are turning up everywhere, and Jessica shows up in a patterned blouse, of course. I thought so. You got sharks in Cabot Cove. That would have been a whole other show. Which, honestly, would have saved every murderer so much trouble, because you dump a body in there and it's never found again. Oh dear, what happened? And when the little old lady goes looking for it, she also gets eaten. This problem just solves itself. I wonder who could be murdering all these people. Uh, I don't know, maybe the big great white that lives somehow in the pond. Number four. One episode of Murder, She Wrote used characters from a movie 40 years earlier. Sure, I quarreled with Jarvis several times. Not only that, I wasn't very fond of him personally, but that doesn't mean I killed him. So they did this amazing thing with Murder, She Wrote that I don't think has ever been done before or since. So the producers and writers found this old movie called Strange Bargain, and they found those original cast members from the film who were still alive. The actors were Jeffrey Lynn, Martha Scott, and Harry Morgan. And they gave them the roles of the same characters they played in the movie so that they could then use that old movie as flashbacks in this episode of Murder, She Wrote. We've got to do something. Oh dear, but what? Why don't you ask for some more money? You know you're worth a lot more than they're paying you a lot more. The story is about a company going bankrupt and the owner decides to commit suicide but tries to convince the bookkeeper to help him make it look like murder so his family gets the insurance. I want you to make my suicide look like murder. Murder. When the bookkeeper goes to the owner's home to talk him out of it, he finds the man dead. Boop. Then he goes along with the general plot and covers up the deed. The film itself had a happy ending, but what they did on Murder, She Wrote, is they cut that happy ending short, and Jessica Fletcher, of course, ends up solving a murder. How brilliant is that? I mean, as a viewer, you kind of have this weird, spooky feeling because you're watching the same actors play the same parts, but 40 years apart. Nobody's ever done that in TV before or since. 
Not to be all about the money, but I do wonder, did they have to pay those actors twice or was it still in some ridiculous contract? I'm guessing ridiculous contract. Number three, she did it for the money. I'm only a mystery writer, I'm not a detective. Most people, when they think of Angela Lansbury now, think of her as just, they don't think of her from her prestigious roles in movies and the stage before that, they think of her as Jessica Fletcher solving crimes in Cabot Cove. Angela Lansbury, nominated for an Oscar at 17. Like 17, when we're all like, still like picking our nose and taking the SAT, she's nominated for an Oscar. Nominated again for her third picture, and again a few years later for The Mentoring Candidate. Now she gets a Tony Award, and another, and a third, and a fourth, and a fifth. But through all of that, there was no money. Awards are great, but let's be honest, you can't cash it in at the bank. That's it. So what happens? Murder, she wrote. Boom, heartbreak solved. This is often shocking to people outside of show business, but I guarantee you there is someone starring on Broadway tonight who's sleeping on someone's couch. That's the truth of it. You know, in fact, I was wondering, what the hell is that guy doing on my couch? Now I know he's the star of Hamilton. So she gets all the acclaim and all the awards and all the nominations, but she never gets that big, giant, fat payday until she takes Murder, She Wrote. Did you lose something? A gold button with a very interesting design, only I didn't lose it, I found it right there next to the body. So okay. it turns out Angela Lansbury was not actually the first actress considered for the role of Jessica Fletcher, but she's the only one we remember. And the actress who was considered for that role, well, Jessica Fletcher probably killed her. Coming up, the actress who had to prove herself her whole career finally shows them all who's the boss. Now, this is my case, and I'm going to solve it. When Murder, She Wrote Behind the Camera continues, you're watching Cozy TV's 10 Secret Stories. Welcome back to Cozy TV's 10 Secret Stories, Murder, She Wrote Behind the Camera. Number two. Throughout her career, Angela Lansbury had to prove herself. I found that those who feel they have something to prove never succeed in doing so. I can't imagine Angela Lansbury was the first woman they looked at for murder she wrote. And yet, I worked with an actor who's in his 20s, who's obsessed with Jessica Fletcher. See, I know what it's like to fight being atypical in Hollywood. Angela Lansbury wasn't classically beautiful. She, she, she was a handsome woman. There are handsome women. Cher is a handsome woman. Rosalind Russell was a handsome woman. Angela Lansbury is a handsome, but we want pretty. Really? It's quite simple, once you know what the trick is. So Angela Lansbury would always lose out roles to somebody that was conventionally better looking. But the people making these decisions are studio executives who probably don't look like George Clooney. Sorry, you're gonna have to leave now. Uh, why? Well, we're clearing the set for the nude scene. I mean, I wish I looked like Angela Lansbury on my best day. She had to fight those archetypes all the time, and so she didn't get the roles that she really desired to have, the ones that would give her that high platform. Mistress Emma McGill! <laughs> Snow was very plentiful, and crumbs were very few. When a weather-beaten sorrow threw, a mansion window flew. You know, even on stage, she had to fight her way in. For Mame, they wanted Lucy or Judy Garland, but she won the role, and she won a Tony. Take that, Lucy! But really, the characters that punched through that made a difference on TV were the unlikely ones. Not particularly good looking, they had no special secret powers or anything like that. Columbo and Murder, She Wrote. These are ordinary people. Not great looking, not young, not wealthy, not particularly strong, but they were smart and they cared. And they worked really hard to bring smarter, richer, more beautiful people to justice. Please, Joe, what happened to your gloves? My gloves. Those fancy driving gloves you were wearing the first time I met you? You weren't wearing them after Marta was killed. Were you wearing them when you beat her to death? And maybe what made them work so well, and they had the longest TV runs, they won all the big awards. Of course, great acting helps. But 
they're like us in a way. You can see a little bit of yourself in them. I mean, if I can't do great things the way I am, but if he can, maybe I can do great things too. And the number one secret story, Murder, She Wrote went on to its biggest, most successful years when Angela Lansbury took it over. She's such an incredible talent, stage theater. At one point, the ratings were slipping, and she said, you know what, I'm gonna take this whole thing over. She convinces them to let her be the executive producer. She gives the show a shot of adrenaline by moving it to New York City, and within a year, its ratings were up again. It's just remarkable uh, how people can, can just Almost in, in the blink of an eye, obviously there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes, but the viewer doesn't know that, and here, here comes somebody playing so much against type. You are know, like, wow, this person has more range than I thought. She became her own showrunner, and she produced it. She brought her son in, I think, and, and together they brought that show back together, and that was kind of an anomaly, too, because at the time there weren't a lot of women running shows. This is Jessica Fletcher. And I think it's that sense of immediacy and repetition, getting to know a character week after week that you feel like they're your buddy or your pal. Angela Lansbury was always younger than what she looked, so she always had to fight to get the roles that were age appropriate for her. However, when she turned 59, it all came together. What Murder, She Wrote was perfect for her. Perfect. After a week of publishers' meetings and book interviews in New York, I can hardly wait to kick off my shoes and relax. I don't know about you, but I could use a cup of tea.